Hey, what is up, guys? It's the out here. Welcome to our Spire of the Dragon LP, episode 4. I almost said Pokemon because I'm so used to it. But in the last episode, we ended up taking on Toasty, the first boss, and beat Toasty pretty easily. And now we are over here to Peacekeepers, I'm pretty sure it's called, and we have rescued Titan. Welcome to Peacekeepers, Spyro. Look how our treasure has been turned against us and stolen. Recover our treasure, Spyro. Collect treasure. Got it. So, I kind of rescued that dragon a bit uh, prematurely, but pretty much what he was saying was that he, pretty much all of the gems that were originally ours has been turned into these guys, Norks. So that is why they're going against us and fighting and everything like that. But this is the second hub world of Spyro the Dragon 1. And if you guys are looking forward to this episode, make sure you smash the like button down below as it does help support the channel and the series. Especially since this is a non-Pokemon LP on our Pokemon channel. So it does need a bit more support than the other LPs. But I'm sorry in advance if I sound a bit eh or I'm not performing my best. I'm actually, I'm not the best when it comes to like fitness at the moment. I'm quite sick. I've got like a booming headache at the moment. But I need to get a video up for you guys and... I really, I wanted to record the first episode of our new LP. I'm pretty sure that um that the finale of Platinum has gone up by now. I'm pretty sure at least. But I wanted to record it, but I didn't want my first like episode to be like me with really bad like commentary, everything like that. With Spider the Dragon, it's oh wait, first off, look at him. He's mooning us. What type of PS1 game do you know that does that? But with Spider the Dragon 1, not like that I'm going to have bad commentary, hopefully at least. But pretty much, I'm just going to go my best. And because these Spyro the Dragon episodes seem to be a bit shorter than usual, like then like um, Pokemon episodes, I should be alright. Now, this episode is actually going to be quite short now that I remember because we're going to use just the hub world and the hub world and then one other world. But depending on what world it is then I guess it could take a while. These episodes as of late are going to start stretching out a bit more and a bit more because the levels are getting longer and longer. But we have another dragon here. It is Magnus. Hi Spyro. Sparks the Dragonfly has been doing a good job protecting you. Make sure to keep him strong by feeding him lots of butterflies. I just love how that sounds, it's like, yeah, keep him big and strong by feeding him butterflies. It's like, that isn't as manly as I thought it was going to be coming from a big dragon like that. But, we have the balloonist here, why don't we speak to him? I know we're not going to leave yet, but we have Gosnold. I'm still waiting for you to find 1,200 stolen treasure. So, pretty much we can go back to Artisans if we would like, but... We're going to stay in here because we have a lot of stuff to do. And plus, we've already 100% at Artisans. We don't even need to go back there. I'm pretty sure... Oh! That isn't good. That isn't good at all. But we are back here, so it's not too bad. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we don't need to go back to the Artisans at all. Since Spyro the Dragon 1 is the only game from the trilogy where you can complete every level on your first run through. Which is really good, especially coming from someone like me who likes to 100% games if I do play them, but one thing you can do with this is you can actually spin this around and flame him and it will shoot like a little thing and it will destroy whatever you put in front of it. Now, the chest that I just destroyed, that took me ages to figure out because as you can see, see, look at this target, you shoot way further. So I thought we were at a set radius with that and that's why when it took me ages when I was in my previous playthrough, I just didn't get it, because like, how can something, without even changing how high and low it goes, shoot something like that? So I went around the whole level forever, trying to figure it out, and then I'm just like, wait, can't we, we'll try this out, and it worked. So, I kind of did it subliminally, but we just broke that area, the little rock formation, and Night Flight is over here. This is the, um, well, the flight level for this world. As I did mention in the last episode, or at least I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the last episode, every world has its own flight world. <laughs> It's kind of funny, like, how repetitious that sounded. But I just killed a rabbit without even meaning to. But there is another nyan 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 thief. He shouldn't be too hard. And as you can see... Wait, first off... Oh, I was about to say, first off, let's free the dragon. But he literally ran into me. So 
That seems to be all right. We'll grab our third egg and let's free the last dragon, Gunnar. Well done, Spyro. Keep up the good work and I know you'll fulfill your destiny. Destiny? I just want to kick some- Just toast those enemies and collect the treasure. <laughs> See, this game has a lot of character. And one thing that I'm pretty sure you guys could have noticed with a new area becomes like comes a new design for the dragons. It's not as like, they weren't going to use the same like three models over and over again for the whole game. They've got like some more models for different areas of the game. Now, this part is going to take me forever to do probably, but you're going to have to get like a crazy late jump to fly into there. It's going to be like this. I don't think we made, oh no, we made it. No, that was fine. So I was stressing for nothing, but in here is the actual, um, the chest. And I'm pretty sure after this, we've gotten everything in this world, which is gonna be good hopefully hopefully this is just a 10 or two fives or something like that or you can just give us a lot more than I thought was gonna be in there even though it does equate to 10 so let's go over here and that was close but now that is our um, inventory like if we check our inventory that is the home world completed and we can go into the first world this one is going to be dry Canyon and if this is the one that I think it is we're gonna have a, a bit of trouble Actually, no, 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 this might be the one actually. Let me check. If we go down, this is the one. Okay, so there is, like I was saying before in previous episodes, Spyro the Dragon is very good at secrets. So if you have forgotten like one single gem, it has no problem with letting you know and knowing where to find it is gonna be really hard. So there's one like secret area, hopefully I remember where it is where there is a dragon and a key. So hopefully I get it right. There's these guys over here that have guns. Keep in mind this is a G-rated game. I know it was all the way back in the day where dinosaurs roamed the earth. Well, not that far away, but let's take this guy out before he gets us, which is lovely. I just want to see is, does this do, yeah, look, watch this. The cactus actually shakes itself off. I almost called it Cacturn because you know, Pokemon, but there is a thief. I want to get this thief because we are 100% in the game like I have mentioned multiple times in this LP and thieves just get on my nerves so there we go that thief is down so as the egg flies to us should have like probably hit the floor and splattered all over the place but why don't we go to the inventory 400 gems 4 dragons so the levels are expanding quite a bit in consideration but does this little pumpkin thing do the same? It does, it like shakes off. I know in the other games it like explodes, but I'm pretty sure that's in Spyro 3, but we have another dragon here. And if this is what I think it is, Conan, don't disappoint. Thank you for releasing me. Boom, that's another one of the counter. I don't know if we had another one this episode, but that voice clip has already been used in um Town Square, I think the level's called. Yeah, yeah it was Town Square. So this part of the world there's another like little area up there, but we need the key to complete that. So we will do that after we go and do this. But as you can see, there's a Nork swinging a bird around and it's gonna use that as like a projectile. That's some pretty uh, barbaric things to do. I mean, who uses a bird to hit an enemy? I don't know, but like, I feel like a piece of wood would be either more family friendly or just, you know, more smart in general but another dragon here we have Boris dry canyon rewards good gliders you are a good glider a eh, Spyro I was born to glide <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that this is the area because of those dragon clues of where we need to go um is it over here um, maybe because I tend to forget, unless I had to like fly around in there, but no, that's where... Okay, so I think we ended up getting what we needed to. Because this is the area that is re really easily missed. And there is a lot more... Oh, no, no, no. It's over here. There's, um... I know you can fly over there. But I'm pretty sure if we go this way and fly... Yes! See, that is the hidden area. That took me forever to figure out as a kid. Especially since, like, um... I'd look at it and be like, how the hell do I get this guy, Maximus? Incredible glide, Spyro. 
I thought I'd be stuck here forever with those ugly vultures standing on my head. Those birds might look tough, but they're pretty tasty. Flame broiled with a pinch of salt. I love how it like cut that dragon off. It's like with a pinch of salt, and then it just cuts off. Like, yeah, we we've had enough of food. But either way, you can never have enough food. But now we can actually go back to this portion where it's the alternate route or route. Whatever, I always like swap between those two like sayings, like especially with Pokemon, with like Route 101 or Route 101. But now we can actually go do this area and are there any gems on the steps? Because Spyro tends to do that. They tend to hide a lot of gems on steps in like areas that you can't really see. And here's Bird Guy. I know the bird's dead when it's in his hand, but it only still counts as one enemy, which kind of sucks. Let's take this out. And I'm, I'm starting to get the hang of the D-pad now. I mean, I'm going back to like my child roots where I used to use nothing but the D-pad. It's actually kind of funny because I've been playing like a bunch of games on my computer as of late or like if I'm on the PS3 and like I'll, I'll automatically like default back to the D-pad and it's just like, wait, there's an analog stick. It's so much better. But since like I've been recording this, I've been playing like Adventures of Pip and if you haven't played that, that's actually an amazing game. And I don't know, I always defaulted back to the D-pad. Because a lot of people tend to hate the D-pad, and it's not as good as the analog stick by any means. But people like make like, oh, the control is so bad. It's not terrible. But either way, pretty sure this is the last dragon, Ivor. Is that you, Spyro? Are you the young dragon I've been hearing so much about? Ever since you are we puffy smoke, we've known. Uh... You've known? Ah, I forget. <laughs> That's another purple dragon, and I just realized that dragons tend to have, like, really long lifespans. So, is that dragon, like, how old is that dragon? Because that is obviously an old dragon, like, you know what I mean. So, for, to be an old dragon, how old do you need to be? And I said old so many times in that, like, statement, it's not even funny. But let's continue on. I'm pretty sure that we are done with the majority of this level, because a lot of the coins are going to be in this area. Hopefully at least, unless I miss some, because if I miss some, then I'll go on a fetch quest. And I'm not really the biggest fan of fetch quests, but there's an extra life here and three gems. And I'll get into the habit of like saying like three gems if the two and the one equal three, even though there's only two gems. Hope you guys have picked up on that. If not, then you probably think I'm like really stupid at the moment. But you know what? That's all right. There's a blue gem in there. This is going to explode. Boom. That was not as cool as I thought it was. They make it a lot cooler in the later games. But this game, like, I love it. Even though it's not as good as the second and third game. That this, it's probably my second favorite Spyro game. Spyro 2 probably falls behind this. But not because of, like, content. But just because of nostalgia reasons. But hopefully we can make this. Pretty sure we can just. That is lovely. That's why a hover would be so needed. Because what if I didn't jump as close as I did? then we would be in a lot of trouble. But let's go over here, take this chest, unlock it with our key, let it spin around into there. I'm pretty sure there's like an odd number. No, there's an even number in there. Okay. Pretty sure we leave this area with an odd number. Do we? Do we? Yeah, we do. Okay, so my memory isn't completely bad. It's not completely terrible, not completely good. But at least I remember that flying spot. And the funniest part is that isn't even the most hidden area. That's not even close to the most hidden area in this game. But lucky I remembered it. So we missed this area, I guess. So let's backtrack a little bit. Oh no, so we just came there. That's where we did the flying bit. So we are back to like where we were supposed to be. That is actually our first 25 gem we've seen. See how it's like purplish? Even though Spyro's purple, this is like the bright ruby purple. That is actually a 25 gem. So, maybe we didn't miss any gems. Maybe we're just like, the amount of gems in this area are so great that it's going to cancel out the difference. But let's free... No, what? Okay. That like, first one missed, but then the other ones I'm like, wait, why isn't it working? But it turns out it's because of the shield. And hopefully, there's a 5 in here. There is a 5. So, that is it for this uh, dry canyon. And that is going to be the end of our Spyro the Dragon uh, episode. Episode 4, actually. And I'm, I apologize in advance if this was quite a shortish episode. Like, I'm guessing it's around like 15-ish minutes, give or take a bit. I didn't plan on finishing it that quickly. But like I do continue to say, um, episodes will get longer as they do. And this is another ep uh, level that you do not want to miss. So, in the next episode, 
we will be taking on Cliff Town and one other area in Spyro the Dragon 1. So if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you smash the like button down below so that's how to support the channel and this series. And yeah, don't really have much else to say. This has been a Rodiad. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.